So a couple more brushes to talk about. And we've talked about uh, matte caps. So let's finish out the brush section I was talking about. We're pretty solid as far as navigation and ZBrush uh, building it up, evaluating our surfaces using perspective and uh, changing our matte caps or changing our materials and changing our lighting. And okay, so let's just keep on, keep on, keeping on. So we're going to use our clay brush to kind of make some modifications to here. And let's talk about, um, they're kind of, they're kind of touted as hard edge brushes, but I don't really differentiate between organic and hard edge brushes just because I use a ton of organic brushes when I'm doing hard edge concept sculpting and I use a ton of uh, hard edge brushes when I'm doing organic sculpting as well so they're really they're kind of hard edge brushes but don't be limited by thinking that you can only use these for hard edge purposes. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is trim dynamics so if I hit B T and we've got trim adaptive here there's trim dynamics so B T D will grab you trim dynamic and I'll throw it over here in our recently used brushes and what trim dynamic is it's kind of a bevel brush so you can go right along a sharp edge and just kill it kill it right back down so you can actually use this to kind of do beveled areas and if you want to you can utilize your uh, stroke uh, your lazy mouse strokes so if you turn that on just by tapping L you know that'll turn on your lazy mouse and then I'll kind of even your stroke out and again if you go up here to your stroke lazy mouse menu and then turn on lazy mouse and then change your lazy radius up to like maybe 30 that'll give you a really long line so you can do very very nice even trim dynamic brushes now if you want to you can actually hold down shift to smooth kind of smooth these areas out a little bit so you can smooth you can read dynamesh you can go back into trim dynamic which you can just tap over here with trim dynamic or BTD brush trim D dynamic and you can use that so that's a really useful brush I'm gonna go ahead and hit L to get rid of that and really what that does is kind of trim bevel a surface so you can actually use it on a if you use it on like a smooth surface you can you can actually use that to kind of just sculpt out very broad sharp forms which is actually useful for organic sculpting as well, kind of finding the planes of the forms you're trying to sculpt. And just like any other brush, if you hold down Alt, it has a build up. So as opposed to sculpting down, this is interesting. So the Trim Dynamic brush by default is Z sub, which is fine because usually when you're trimming something, you think you want to actually trim into the object and actually kind of do this kind of stuff. So Z sub is by default, it actually makes sense. Um, if you hold down Alt, it'll build up. Now that's the opposite of the standard brush which by default is Z adds. So when you use a standard brush it Z adds out and then you hold down Alt and Z adds down. With Trim Dynamic it's the opposite. You trim down and then you hold down Alt to kind of build up to a surface. And I would I use both of these all the time. You can use Alt to kind of build up a lip and then trim trim it back down trim it back down, hold down Alt to kind of build up. And when we get into H Polish in just a second um, that's really really useful. I, I use Alt almost half the time. Now when I would talk about trim dynamic I usually use just the Z sub or the default version of that but occasionally if I get into a trouble area uh, I can use alt as well as if you wanna you know, make a really big trim dynamic brush and kinda just trim out to a flat plane surface read dynamesh go ahead and go in here to grab your clay brush build this out hold down alt you know you can very quickly start doing some really cool uh, mechanicals type stuff but uh, so what I use in conjunction a lot with Trim Dynamic is H Polish. So let's talk a little bit about that. And I've got perspective on, so that's why things are kind of like getting receded in the distance. And I also have under draw, aligned object is off. So as I go over to the side, you'll kind of start warping a little bit of the object here. Um, but we talked about that. So I'm going to hold down Shift to Smooth. And I can hold down Alt to kind of dig in with my standard brush and then I can let go and not hold down alt and kind of build up a lip. I can use my clay brush to kind of build up to that lip if I want to. Control swipe to read Dynamesh which is over here in the geometry. Dynamesh is on. So while Dynamesh is on if I control swipe out there it's going to update my mesh. Okay. Now if I hold down, uh, if I go into H polish which is for you is just B H and the reason why I go straight to H polish is I don't have any other brushes loaded by default that start with H. So when you hit BH, it just goes ahead and selects this one because that's the only one that starts with H in there. H polish is a really interesting brush because you can use that to polish broad surfaces. Now Trim Dynamic 
And it's another, it's a, actually H polish is a Z add by default, it looks like. But it kind of behaves on similarly to trim dynamic in that it kind of polishes down by default. So you can see I take these really broad surfaces and you can make your brush pretty big and you can just polish the heck out of these surfaces and it makes it really, really nice and smooth. And this is actually a pretty low res mesh. Um, it's only 80,000 points. So you can see how big those squares are, but it's actually polishing it to a really nice, nice surface in here. And if you change it to like a chrome blue or something, you can see um, how nice and clean, even on a low res mesh, you can kind of get these surfaces in here. Change that back to a matte cap gray. So the difference between H polish and trim dynamic is basically how it handles edges. And you can see when I get into a tight area in here, you see how H polish wants to kind of just push in. If you hold down alt, it'll actually polish up to a, to that line. So you can use that to your advantage. You can polish down, then hold down alt and polish up. So polish down, hold down alt and polish up, polish down, hold down alt and polish up. And by switching, switching between those, you can actually get really nice services. So back here in this crevice here, I'm going to control swipe again to Dynamesh. And you know what? I'm going to bump this resolution up to 256. There we go. Um, so now in this area here, if I polish this, this side down, it's actually deforming this area over here, which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to have it polish up to that surface. And you're going to see it leaves the rest of them alone. And then I can polish this little lip it built here down. Hold down Alt, polish it up, build it down, polish it up. So again, I'm alternating between Alt and not Alt. And then shift to smooth, and then read Dynamesh. And then on this side over here, I can hold down Alt with H polish. And that'll leave that surface up there alone. And you can get really, really nice creases in between those two areas and then polish down. Now as I'm polishing without holding down Alt, you're going to see it's kind of wanting to polish this area up here. Let's hold down Alt, smooth, polish it down, hold down Alt, polish it up. So I'm swatching, switching between these two surfaces here. But what H polish isn't doing is affecting that hard edge. So let's say, you know what, I want to bevel along this edge. Well H polish is the wrong brush to do that. You try and do that with this brush, it's just going to be like what it's trying to do is actually find and respect edges. So where that is, is you go here to your brush menu and you go to surf, no, modifiers, I'm sorry, not modifiers, uh, samples. So open up brush samples here and you're going to see when I switch between H polish, see how the, watch what the, watch these things change. So here's the H polish brush selected, trim dynamic selected. So you're going to see preserve edges for H polish is at 30. On trim dynamic, pre preserve edges is at one. And where that comes into play is, with trim dynamic selected, it doesn't want to preserve any edges. So I can just go right along this edge and just kill it, which is good. It, you know, if I wanted to have a bevel along this edge, I can certainly just add a bevel really quickly. H polish won't do that. What H polish will do, we go select H polish with this preserve edge option on, you can actually polish this surface down now. So that bevel we just made, we can actually polish it because it will respect that new edge that trim dynamic made. So definitely use those to your advantage and you can make your, your brush size is fairly large and H polish is kind of a feel brush. You got to kind of get in there and feel it. Like say I want to polish the surface down. See how big my brush is. I'm going to hold down alt and then let go of alt, hold down alt, let go of alt. And I'm just going to kind of do that around these two surfaces, just kind of getting a feel. And my brush size is about the inner Here's the focal shift. If I turn my, so by default, the focal shift is at negative 39 for the H polish brush. And I would just like, I would leave that alone unless you really feel the need to make a change on that. But you can just kind of get a feel for how big, so your brush size is important on H polish. You want to make your brush size, if you make your brush size really small and try and polish this big surface, you're going to get like undulating nastiness. So what you want to do is make your brush size big and then just kind of use a feather touch and then hold down alt and just its brush size mixed with holding down alt when you get around surfaces like this and then brush size and holding down alt and just kind of alternating between those to kind of get a feel for how this H polish is going to affect your surface and brush size plays a huge part in that so definitely you know don't default to making your brush size too small because like I showed you you're gonna get those nasty undulating things if you're if the surface you want to polish is this big I would make your brush about that big to start off with and then just polish it down, holding down Alt, and then letting go of Alt, and just kind of polishing those surfaces back up and down, and then smoothing too, hold down Shift to smooth, and you can see how very quickly you can start refining these surfaces using the right brush size and the right um, kind of feathering on your Wacom 
tablet. You know, it's a it's a pressure sensitivity feel too. And I can hold down Alt and just make these go to a nice tight corner here, and smooth, and then redynamesh. And if you got something like this where it's getting warbly, just go in here with your move brush and just kind of move those warbles out. And then H polish, and you can kind of just go in here and just kind of really quickly polish those surfaces. Control swipe again to refine, polish. So again, just going back and forth between smooth, H polish, trim dynamic, which I don't really use all that often. It's mostly just H polish, but then if I want something specific, like, okay, I want to I want to go to a bevel and then kind of ease out to a not a bevel smooth that down, go in here to H polish, and then you can kind of transition this bevel here to nothing. And then using move brush to kind of get rid of any warbles you might have. You know, so that that kind of control over your uh the flat and planar areas of your surfaces.